everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a viewer request from Musa Ahmed, and he wants to know what to do when you arm your quad and it just flips out. So today, we're going to talk about the most common causes of that and how to fix them. Musa has reached out to me via YouTube looking for some help with his problem. I believe he has an Ishin wizard and I'm pretty sure I know what his problem is. Uh, he's indicated to me that he's updated the firmware to what I believe is the latest version of Betaflight and now when he goes to arm his quad it just spins up, not a control, flips out uh, and he can't fly it. I have a couple different examples of things to look at today. Of course I've got a wizard because when my viewers are using a wizard, I'm using a wizard too. Uh, but this is, I think, really going to make it easy to explain uh, exactly what I think this particular problem is. Secondly, I've got one of my racing quads, and that is actually because it's set up a little bit different than normal. And that's something that could lead to a problem as well, uh, but also I think this is going to help us understand what to look for a little bit. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of what we're dealing with today. I think it's time to jump over to the overhead camera, maybe we'll look at some screen grabs, and we'll try to figure out what's going on. The simplest explanation as to what's happening when you arm and the quad just out of control is something is backwards, and it's literally that simple. Uh, either a motor is running in the wrong direction, you either have your props on incorrectly, maybe all your motors are running in the wrong direction, uh, or your flight controller could be in the wrong orientation. And those are the things that we're gonna look at today. Starting with the wizard, we're going to talk about motor direction and prop orientation. And currently right now, everything is set up correctly on this prop. Uh, the props are installed correctly. They're on the right motors. They're all gonna be spinning in the right direction. Uh, and I've also configured the quad to make sure uh, that the motors are spinning properly and going in the right direction. Now, this setup is called props in. What that means is when you arm or when you're flying, the props are gonna be spinning inwards towards the quadcopter. And really the way that I tell if the props are on correctly is the tall side of the prop. The tall side should be the edge that's going in the direction that the prop is spinning. So again, this is normal props in orientation. I want all four of the propellers spinning in towards the quadcopter. The reason I have my racer here is because this is different. This one is set up to run props out. So the orientation on this, the propellers are running in this direction. Again, if we look, we can see the tall side of the prop is on the outside going in the direction that the propeller is spinning. So these I'm expecting to rotate like this. Now there's reasons why you would want to run your props either in or out. Being a freestyle pilot running props out, it's going to help keep you out of trees a little bit easier. Uh, it's not going to want to pull the quad into branches if you clip something. Uh, if you're racing, this helps with turtle mode. Uh, if you're flipped upside down in the grass and you're trying to do turtle mode, with the prop spinning outwards, it's not gonna fire grass into your camera, essentially making it impossible to see. If you can't see, you can't race. So these are the first two steps to check, is A, make sure your motors are spinning in the proper direction, B, make sure your props are installed correctly. Installing the props correctly is simple enough. We can visually see that uh, and just make sure the orientation is right. Again, go by my wizard here. This is what you guys need to be looking at. This is more than likely how your setup is going to be orientated. What do we do if something is spinning in the wrong direction? Well, that's simple enough to fix. We can check our motor direction in Betaflight to make sure the motors are spinning in the right direction. Uh, then we can use BL Heli to reverse the motor direction if we need to. So why don't we just jump in on the computer and we'll take a look at that quick. With my quad plugged in, I'm gonna simply click connect in beta flight and I'm gonna go ahead over to the motors tab now make sure you read this if this is your first time essentially this is saying what we're doing is dangerous make sure you take your props off be smart every single time you're working on the bench take your props off and always use a smoke stopper 
I'm not using the smoke stopper to prevent the smoke. I'm using the smoke stopper to help protect myself. If a motor spins up and runs out of control and you get your finger in there, you're definitely gonna have a bad time. A smoke stopper can help prevent injury. So always use a smoke stopper when you're working on the bench. I can't put enough emphasis on this. Be safe. Be here to play with your quads tomorrow. After reading the warning, I'm going to go ahead and hit this checkbox so I can enable my motors and I'm going to plug in my battery. You'll hear the ESE's tone as the quad boots upon plugging in the battery and now we can start to spin up our motors to make sure they're running in the right direction. If we look, we've got a little guide right here that's going to show us not only our motor numbers, but we have an arrow pointing the direction that the motor should be spinning. And usually what I'll do is I'll go through them one at a time and just confirm that every motor is spinning in the right direction. Just simply click on the slider. Then I like to use the arrow key to slowly ramp the motor up. Now that the motor's spinning slowly, you can do one of two things. I personally will rub my finger on the edge of the motor to feel the direction. If you're not comfortable with that, I do have another trick for you. By simply taking any kind of tape and making a flag, you'll be able to visually see what direction the motor is going to be spinning. So let's try that again. I'm going to click on my slider and then using the up arrow, I'm just going to slowly ramp the motor. It's going a little fast, but as I slow it down, we can clearly see the direction that it's spinning. I can visually observe that it is spinning in the right direction. Everything is correct on this particular motor. Now you're going to want to repeat this on all four motors to make sure they are actually spinning in the right direction. Maybe at this point you found one or two motors are spinning in the wrong direction and we need to correct that. We're going to do that by opening our BL Heli configurator or suite depending on what you prefer. We're going to get our quad connected. As always, make sure you have your USB cable connected and with the software open, go ahead and click on connect. Once you've connected successfully in either the BL Heli suite or configurator, go ahead and plug your battery in. Once you've heard the boot tones, go ahead and click on read setup. At this moment, you should have a reading a display with some type of information regarding your ESCs. And this is where we change the direction. So for example, if ESC1 was going the wrong way, right now we see where it says reversed, we would just simply click that to normal. You're going to want to stay away from this bi-directional, bi-directional, reversed. Uh, sometimes you'll have 3D options in here depending on the firmware version or the individual ESCs. Uh, really we're just after normal and reversed in these circumstances. Um, so if it's going the wrong way, just simply click on the opposite. So if I start reverse and it's backwards, we're going to switch it to normal. Uh, same thing on all of them. If ESC2 is going the wrong direction, I'm going to change it from normal to reversed. Uh, and essentially we're going to go through and make sure that all our motors are spinning the right direction by making these changes. We've checked our prop orientation and we've also checked the direction in which our motors are spinning. So far, everything looks okay, but the quad still flips out when we arm it. Well, there could be a couple of things that we need to address within Betaflight. I've gone ahead and I've connected to Betaflight, so let's head over to the configuration tab. Inside the configuration tab, the first thing I recommend looking at and well, the most important thing in here that I previously mentioned is you're going to have a little diagram that's going to show you the direction in which beta flight expects your motors to be spinning. By default, you're going to have a props in orientation and that's what this is depicting here. So as long as you're expecting all your props to spin inwards, you're all set. Put them on, run your motors, no problem. But this is what we need to check is motor direction is reversed. In the later versions of Betaflight, this option has been removed from the CLI to the GUI interface. And we can reverse our motors in Betaflight, or at least tell Betaflight that our motors are reversed by simply hitting this checkbox. Now you'll see that the chart has changed and it also says that our prop direction is reversed. So we can see that the props are now going in an outward direction towards the sides of the quads as opposed going towards the center of the quad. Again, I'll hit the switch again and we'll see it reverse back to normal. 
you can see the direction has changed. So make sure that this is selected appropriately for the direction that you're expecting your props to spin. Not only do you need to address prop direction inside BL Heli to make sure that they're actually going the right direction, but you also have to tell Betaflight which direction your props are going as well. Failure to do either part of this, that's what's going to cause the quad to spin out and basically, you know, just flop away when you're trying to arm and fly. Alright, we've been through all this stuff and the quad still flips out. There's one more thing to look at, and that's actually why I have my wizard here today. Uh, this wizard has been a great example uh, of how to grow and learn to work with these quadcopters, uh, and I still really enjoy using it for this channel. I think it's a great example to show you guys something very realistic uh, with what you're working with. Uh, but anyway, there's a catch with some of these wizards that a lot of people may not be familiar with. Uh, and if you have one of these that has the SP Racing F3 flight controller in it, this is a very common issue that I've run into, I'm going to say a million times, even though that's not true. In order to make the USB port accessible, Ishin rotated the flight controller negative 90 degrees inside this quad. Every flight controller is going to have an orientation as far as what direction it's expected to be pointed. You need to remember that these devices have sensors in them that are going to give the software information as to what the quad is doing. That is a gyro and an accelerometer. If these devices aren't pointed in the proper direction, then how is the quad going to know it's going in the right direction? And this is probably the most common cause for flip out on an Ishin Wizard. I see this very frequently where people will update their firmware, they'll update Betaflight, uh, and they're just not aware that the flight controller is rotated. This is why I put a lot of emphasis on backing up your configuration before you do any real type of software modification or update. That way you can see how it was configured from the factory and you'll have that to fall back on if you ever need that information again. I pulled up an image of the SP Racing F3 flight controller so you can see what I'm talking about a little bit more clearly. Pretty much every flight controller you're going to come across is going to have an arrow similar to this one. See this right here? Flight direction. This needs to be pointed forward. This is the direction in which the flight controller is, well, essentially expecting to be heading. If we look here on this SP Racing one, we can see the USB port is actually on the back side of the flight controller. So technically we would have to plug the USB into the back side, not in this handy, convenient little spot that Ishin designed into the side of the quad. That could be quite difficult to be connected. Well, this is fine. We can rotate the flight controller. We just need to tell Betaflight that the flight controller is rotated. Jumping back to my configuration tab in Betaflight, what we need to do is scroll over to this area right here that is the board and sensor alignment. And we need to tell it that in this case, I've chosen to go with negative 90 degrees on the yaw. The reason I did negative 90 is because that's what Ishin did from the factory. You could also do 270 degrees here, and essentially that's the same thing. So either negative 90 or 270 degrees is the same number in this case. Again, I just chose to stay with the negative 90 because that's how this was pre-configured. I don't know, stick with success, right? There you have it. There's my explanation to the three most common causes that could cause your quadcopter to flip out when you arm. And let's just recap real quick. Prop direction, make sure your props are facing properly. Second, motor direction, make sure your motors are spinning in the right direction. Also make sure that your software knows what direction your motors are spinning in. So if you've reversed the direction of those motors, make sure you tell Betaflight. Number three, What's the orientation of your flight controller? Is your flight controller actually flying forward like it's expecting to, or is it twisted? Oh, and one last thing that's worth mentioning, a bad motor could do the same thing. So if everything's spinning in the right direction, but one motor seems to not quite be spinning as fast as the others, it could be the motor. But again, those are the three most common causes. Well, I hope this video helps you figure out why your quad might be spazzing out, and doing all kinds of weird things. But that's all I got for today. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.